dragged you in. Hello? Hello, Nick. Hey, can you hear me? Hey. Hey. Yes, I can hear you. Hey, welcome, cozy.tv slash big tech. Yeah. Yeah. So here we are again. Yeah. Uh, because you are causing me problems. That that always seems to be the interaction with you. It's pretty remarkable. Uh, it was early on when you are stirring the pot with everybody and you're threatening to kill people. And then it's when you get Mr. Girl reported, which, honestly, I don't entirely blame you for that. There's obviously some culpability. And now here we are. And, you know, all I have to say is this. Last night, Chief Trumpster, who does not have a big following or anything, like he's not an e-celeb, like not a, not a face like you and I, this guy has been around for four years, and I hardly promote him. Sometimes I do. But this is a guy who goes out there consistently and takes the initiative to do positive things for our mission and our agenda. And yesterday is a perfect example. Without anybody telling him to do it, he wrangles together this huge space. He capitalizes on the Preston Parra situation. He gets that Tyler character on the call. It's a great night. We have 1,200 people watching the space, a lot of influential types are all doing damage control. And I was telling somebody, it's so funny that this is happening because I was just telling somebody today, I said, wow. I said, Chief Trumpster is one of the only people in this entire scene who has gotten clout from me and really not even a lot, but he has taken the clout uh, and the platform that I gave him and he's doing something that's actually helpful. He's doing something that's actually pushing the ball down the field and helping me. I said, because most of the people in this scene, they take the platform that I gave them, or the clout, or whatever, and they use it to start this ridiculous uh, cannibalistic drama against our own people. And, you know, it's not just you. But uh, it's it's even these people like, you know, Mio and Tenryo, and it's a lot of them. And don't get me wrong, I like Tenryo. Tenryo's actually been very helpful behind the scenes. And I like Mio. And actually, I like you. I think you're a good streamer. But do you know how frustrating it is that I run this site, I pay for it, I run this foundation, I run AFPAC, I'm out there on the front lines getting attacked constantly and to constantly have to go back into fucking group chats and into these streams, this ridiculous drama that goes on between our own people firing at each other. And especially with this situation, this is essentially a fake situation that has been manufactured by a gay Jew, Milo. The whole thing is fake. This smiley Ali thing happened six years ago. And the kid is gay. I mean, we've seen the Instagram posts. So we we bounced Ali from the group chat and we we got him to bow out of public life. What more do people want here? Uh, you know, somebody said it on Twitter the other day. They want an apology? I mean, what am I even apologizing for? We became aware of it last week, disavowed immediately, took action. It's over. And the only reason it came around at this time is because this gay Jew woke up on the wrong side of the bed. He'd known about this for over a year. Clearly, it wasn't pressing. So, I mean, this is a giant diversion, and it's also a targeted attack on me with the deliberate attempt of kicking up dirt around my reputation and so to see somebody like you harping on it, you're the last one harping on it, it's just like, you know, what's the what's the big idea here? What's the angle? Uh, and you, you say this stuff about, 
self-righteously, oh, well, you know, we got stuff going on in our own house. No, we fucking don't. Ali has never been to AFPAC. And he's not even a groiper. He's not America first. He was actually against America first for years. We, he reluctantly collaborated with me during Stop the Steal when it was all hands on deck. And I think that's the last time we really worked together. And the same goes for Milo. He's somebody that I talk to occasionally, and he came into AFPAC 3 and brought Marjorie. But once again, aside from that, uh, this is somebody that called himself a, an, a so-called arm's-length ally. So, you know, to harp on these things, you're just giving bandwidth to a lot of fake diversionary stuff, and all it's designed to do is to switch up the focus, muddy my reputation, and to see you feeding into that, I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but it's just so irritating that, I mean, you have people out there like me that are trying to do the right thing against all odds, and just constantly... Uh, this ankle biting bullshit and people like you holding us back with the, you know, if is it self-serving is, is it about you wanted to get my attention to come on your stream so you could get viewers. Is that it? Is it about building your brand? I, you know, but it, other than that, it's not productive. So you no, know, help, help me understand here. I, I, I and, and see this shit in the live chat. You got red pilled, uh, faggot. I mean, this is the biggest loser, Teddy Feaser on planet Earth, super chatting your show. I mean, does that not tell you everything you need to know about what this is about? What a joke. And I, and I stick up for you. I mean, you got people texting me constantly. You got to kick big tech off your platform. And uh, in spite of the problems you've caused for me, I've said, no, no, you know, that's not what Cozy's about, this and that. And you come on here and you stream copyrighted content. You talk shit about me. You talk shit about everybody else. You're dragging on this psyop, which clearly was foiled by me. And, you know, it makes me feel like a big asshole for not throwing you under the bus when everybody else was attacking you, like Andrew Anglin or Beardson or whoever else. It's ridiculous. I mean, your whole chat, your whole, your entire chat, uh, the victim blaming, your people are faggots, Nick. We attack gays and pedophiles at somebody. Seriously? Well, you so, got to understand that my chat is tripled in my normal size. So three quarters of these people are not people who watch my show. Okay, but if they're attracted, they're to, if, if your live chat is hospitable to this, if your moderators are hospitable to this... Uh, you can't, you can't say, oh, well, you don't see people like that in my live chat. Yeah. That's so true. that's true. Mods. Somebody goes, boo-hoo. <laughs> Unbelievable. Listen, it's not boo-hoo. I, I'm not expecting people to feel bad for me. It's just not right. It's just not right. If you're down with this agenda and this mission, um, you know, then you, you don't do crap like this. It's just not, it's, it's disloyal. And it's the wrong thing to do. So, that's what I have to say to you. Um, well, I hear you on that. And, uh, you know, I can definitely, like, sympathize with that. I could put myself in your shoes and feel that way. Absolutely. So, um, I mean, like I could give a big defense and say like, well, for me, it's like, here's all the reasons why I'm doing it. But, uh, I don't know if that would make you feel any better about it at all. So it seems like it'd be kind of spinning the wheels, you know? I mean, all I'm asking here is for you to look at the big picture. Um, which is that this entire situation is clearly like manufactured. I mean, do you, do you understand that? Do you understand what I what I'm saying when I say that? 
that like, you know, Milo running this op, he produced these screenshots from Smiley. Smiley, this happened six fucking years ago. Okay, I mean, let's just get the facts straight. Because honestly, I'm really sick of hearing about this situation. Six years ago, he elects to send nudes to Ali. And I've said this before. When I was 15, I wasn't sending nudes to anybody, let alone gay men. And if gay men asked me to send nudes, I wouldn't have done it. And, you know, it's all okay. So maybe you agree with that. Well, 100%. What I've been saying is uh, the pedophile gets hanged, but the kid who sent the nudes gets whipped in public. In my world, they both get punished. The the adult gets it worse. <laughs> but uh, I yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. And, and I said the same. I think that there's obviously more responsibility on the adult because they're an adult, and it's also perverse. So you know, it's they're both. It's both a homosexual action, but. Adult has more responsibility and, you know, because they're the one engaging with the younger one. They're they're the one that's, you know, you could say more perverse. So, but so this kid stays in contact with Ali for years and he's telling him, hey, you're going to be at Stop the Steal? Hey, you're going to be at AFPAC? And Smiley reports this to Milo a year ago and Milo goes, oh, okay, and doesn't tell anybody. And then a year later, after Milo has a falling out for me, with me, he throws everything that he can at me, and he's got nothing because my conduct is unimpeachable. So he's just got these, you know, oh, I think he doesn't go to church or, oh, you know, this and that. Okay. And then he goes, oh, I know. So he literally calls up Smiley on April 7th and says, hey, remember that conversation we had 14 months ago? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. And then he gets Marjorie Green to copy and paste a message on her Twitter account. I mean, and so you see very plainly, and I said this on my show, it's not to say that what happened, uh, you know, isn't wrong. And it it has been addressed. Smiley filed his police report. Ali is leaving public life. He's not going to be at AFPAC, and he never has. goes without saying. Um, But you see that, like, that is how these things work in politics like madison cawthorn when they dug up all those videos or it's like trump and they bring up stormy daniels and so it's like the same idea of if you're like a diehard trump supporter and you're like well i don't know the stormy daniels stuff looks pretty bad it's like uh yeah but the people that are pushing it are jewish pedophile lizard people and they're only doing it because it's going to hurt trump and like everybody understands that you know what i'm saying yep Yep. So, and that's why I give the example of Chief Trumpster because, you know, whatever you want to say about us, I mean, yeah, it, it, we're people, okay? I mean, the Catholic Church is corrupt and has problems. Every institution is corrupt and has problems because it's full of people and people have problems. But America First is the only one pushing a conservative message. You know, whatever people may speculate about me or they may look at people that are loosely associated. And I don't think that's I don't I don't think that's being disingenuous to say that. I pulled up screenshots from Groiper War where I said literally Milo and Ali are not Groipers. They're people that we can use in certain circumstances to further our agenda. You know, loosely affiliated have problems. It's like, but look at the bigger picture. We get Chief Trumpster, uh, well, he does it on his own accord. He sets up this space, and we raise awareness about the fact that our country's being controlled and corrupted by a Jewish-Israel mafia. And it's like, yeah, that's a positive thing. It's a positive thing that we exist to do that. And so people should be thinking in terms of that instead of this circular firing. And, and by the way, and I extend that admonition to a lot of people. It's just that the difference is, you know, because Tenrio was saying stuff the other day, like, I'm going to leave the platform if Big Tech doesn't go, and Mio's no, talking if, shit. if Brittany and, and Mio don't go. Yeah, that, oh, okay. That had nothing to do with me. Okay, so I don't know. I, I was trying to help Tenrio at that time. Okay. In any case, 
still not a fan, you know, when he says that or Mio saying the stuff that he's saying. E- Ethan Ralph hits me up and says, you know, Big Tech's got to go and, uh, and and this sort of thing. And it's like, what if everybody that's firing at each other were just had a little bit of uh, graciousness to put that aside and direct that at other people? Like, what if they put all that effort into a logging or attacking right. uh, these these individuals? You know, because I just don't understand what what's the what is the outcome that you want out of this situation? Like, I I don't understand. It was addressed. It was taken care of. A lot of it was based on misunderstandings and and essentially lies. Uh, so, I want to uh, I want to blow off some steam because this is a sweaty situation. Mm-hmm. Number one. And I want to say some things that are on my mind that feel like they're not allowed to be said. And it's a really bad feeling. Mm-hmm. And I also want to uh, fire back at people who've been firing on me. And it's, it's absolutely achieving that purpose. They're really mad right now. They're threatening to Ethan Ralph is uh, saying he's going to go visit my wife and kids on Tuesday in LA while he's out here. Um, Wurzelwood's girlfriend's currently doxing pictures of my children on her Telegram. Like, they're going crazy. So this is hurting them. And they've been punking me, so I'm firing back, and it's working. So we're in a feud that goes both ways. And nobody complains when Brittany and Mio A-log me for hours, endlessly, night after night. They have my face, just like I'm doing to Beardson and Wurzelwood right now. When they do this exact same thing to me day after day for hours, nobody cares. And that's fine. But when I do it to them... The whole world burns down. So I want that. And I want to be able to say what's on my mind, which it feels like everybody's telling me, don't say it. Don't say the obvious thing that everybody's thinking, which is that this really sucks. And honestly, Nick, I want to ask you, which the thing I haven't heard from you that I'd really like to hear is hindsight being 2020 with regard to the Milo and Ali thing. What would you have done different, if anything? Or do you feel like, your choices were, I mean, and I'm not saying they were wrong, but do you, you, you have the inside scoop. You were there. Do you feel like that? Cause I haven't really heard you say that. So I don't know, but I'm left would with that, the feeling. I'm left would with that change things for you? If I, if I said what, do, do, am I supposed to go on the stream and say something like, if I had known that I would have never, I mean, is that like, yeah, the would thing you is like me to of write a, up a statement? Well, it's a, no, it's like an elephant that lives in our room now for me. Um, that I was like, what's the deal? Does is Nick cool with bringing gays on in our group or not? And did he not know? Did he what did he know? Did he not know? And does looking back, does he go, you know what? Like, what was your reason for bringing those guys around? Like, you know, Milo's nuts. But wait, when I, you say when you say bringing those guys around, yeah. you know what what exactly does that mean? Well, there's like Cozy.tv slash Milo and Cozy.tv slash Ali. I know Milo didn't use it, but Milo was at AFPAC. And Ali's been streaming on Cozy. And I talked to Ali, trusting him with with a trust that I extended because of my trust in you. Here's what I'll say about this. And maybe you're not going to like this. Maybe other people won't like it. And I don't really care. But I care about winning. I care about victory and success. And so Milo and Ali, I never considered groipers, and they never considered themselves groipers. But they are also people that were useful in their own way at their own time. Ali was one of the only people organizing for Stop the Steal. Were you organizing for Stop the Steal? I mean, where were all these fucking angels? People talk about... You know, Ali, and it's true, I knew that, that Ali was bisexual or gay. Uh, but but where were all these people that I had to choose from that were organizing massive rallies across the entire country in every state capital during Stop the Steal? Should I have said I'm not going to go? Should I have said I'm not going to go to Stop the Steal? I will not be in Atlanta. I will not be in every other city. I'll not go to Million Bag of March. Because, I was there at Million Mag in March. I watched you speak. Because there. Ali is gay. I went to stop the steal, regardless of who, you know, Alex Jones was there too. I don't agree with Alex Jones, and, and obviously it's different. It's not about agreement. 
but you go with what you got. That's politics. This idea that in politics you have the luxury, especially in the position we're in, of only ever associating in any capacity with people that have perfect conduct. And I know what you're going to say. Well, it's, it's far from perfect, whatever you want to call it. Good conduct, acceptable conduct. They, they agree with us on, on even 10% of things. We don't have that luxury. What matters is that the leader has the vision. What matters is the people who are closest to the center have that vision. Sometimes in this world, you have to work with people that you don't necessarily like and maybe actually you hate. I always hated Milo. I always knew what he was about. Laura Loomer likes to tell me, I told you so. I tell her, you can't tell me so because I knew then. And I made the conscious decision that knowing full well that this day would come, that it was worth the risk of associating with him. Because guess what? He brought Marjorie Taylor Greene to the conference, and it was the biggest conference ever. And I got launched into the mainstream. And by the way, that was also an event where we lost our headline speaker that night. So am I supposed to say in that moment, here we are with AFPAC 3, our $200,000 conference. Our headline speaker has bowed out because he got a call from Fox News. And Milo comes in and says, hey, Marjorie Green is here to speak. Am I supposed to say, oh, I have to end this phone call because you're bad news? Um, you know, if, if people don't like that I made that decision, well, then you can join all the other people that are losers and not doing anything close to what we're accomplishing in America first. And same thing with Ye. I was getting ready to be done with Milo permanently in the summer. And there was one person who was willing to stick their neck out and get the number from Daria. Because Daria doesn't like me from InfoWars. Mm. And, I, and I hated that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, and you could talk to anybody that I know. I hated it from the moment it happened. That Milo was even insinuated into the conversation and made me physically cringe and it was unbearable. And I actually sought advice from many people close to me and said, should I just leave L.A. right now? Should I quit because I hate this guy and so on? But the difference between me and all the bystanders and all the people on the sidelines is that I take the responsibility and say, I, I will endure that and I will suffer that. For the sake of the bigger picture, which is that proximity to Ye at that time, obviously, was an extremely critical thing. So, you know, again, we have to be, sp the specificity is important. I didn't bring these guys around to hang out and just be BFFs and say, hey, none of these people spoke at AFPAC. None of these people are on the foundation. None of these people are on uh, any of the other corporations that I own. But they had a role to play at a time. And if there were another option in those scenarios of the, you know, the, the guy that we all want to associate with doing what they were doing, obviously I would have loved to select that. But, you know, life and politics doesn't give you that, especially doesn't give you that when you're a guy like me, when you're canceled completely. So, you know, there's an ex expression my father used to tell me when I was younger, which is that, you got to play by the rules until you're in a position to make the rules. Now, obviously, yep. I don't play by the rules. I, I break as many rules as I can, and I am very extreme and so on. But I'm also a pragmatist. I'm, I also do have a, a sense for the practical. And if I think you look at the decisions, I don't even know what the criticism is. You know, having to placate Milo and listen to his ridiculous rants on text. He's blowing up my phone, sending me 25 text messages at a time. And I get the ear of Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think that's an acceptable trade-off. Ali, who we've never, who has never called himself America first, ever. Once again, I speak on the same stage at him at the Stop the Steal rallies. I mean, is that the criticism? Because I, I own that. I own that whole situation. Now, that'd be altogether different People are comparing it to Turning Point USA. Rob Smith is a paid ambassador, meaning like he's paid to represent their group. He's on the stage. It's just not comparable. It's apples and oranges. We wouldn't have anybody on the stage. It's, and by the way, both of them are asking for that kind of thing. 
Laura Loomer's asking to be on the stage. And it's like, you know, listen, I love Laura Loomer. She's a Zionist. So, you know, we have to be specific about what we're talking about. And that's where I get to the whole point of this. When I say it's manufactured, it, like you said, a lot of it sucks. But when you get down to the brass tacks, because that's what a leader has to do, is make decisions based on the concrete details of a specific situation, I don't understand what I'm supposed to be regretful or apologizing over. I'd fucking do it again. I, at 100%, I would do it again to be at that table with Donald Trump and Ye and tell Donald Trump to come to his senses and drop the teleprompter and tell Ye to, you know talk about this Jewish stuff and this sort of thing. 100% I'd do it again and get Marjorie Green at the conference. And I'd be at Stop the Steal talking about election fraud. It's the most critical thing going on. And that's where, uh, unfortunately, these Goyim get dazzled. So somebody shows something emotionally upsetting in their face and they get dazzled by it and they can't see past it. But it's like, you know, election fraud is actually bigger than one out of quite frankly, many gay people in the conservative movement. I don't say that to minimize it, but I do mean to say that, uh, you know, I collaborate with Ali so I could be at Stop the Steal. And this is something that affects all of us forever. When they increase the mail-in ballots by 200% or 100% from 16 to 20, and they make it so that we can't win elections anymore, yeah, it was actually like the most important thing that we were in the streets speaking out about it and pressuring Republican legislators to take action. And people go, well, but you associated with one gay guy from Con Inc. to get on that stage? It's like newsflash. That is a tale often told across the whole board. Uh, find me. I, I, if you pulled me a hundred guys like Ali, organizer, activist, whatever, from the Con Inc. side, half of them would have the same profile as Ali. And again, it's not to say it's acceptable, but you have to look at that big picture. And it'd be one thing if if I was if I was doing a handshake deal and saying, all right, listen, you're going to be on the board of my nonprofit and you got the top slot at AFPAC in exchange, I get a bunch of money. Like, you know, if that was a story, I would say, you know what, you're right. That was absolutely corrupt. But let's be perfectly clear about what we're talking about. We're talking about a loose affiliation contingent on on a very specific set of extenuating circumstances in the case of Marjorie at AFPAC or in the case of me at the Stop the Steal rallies or in the case of Milo or Ali in the context of Yay 24. If it were anything else, maybe it'd have a point. And I, I sort of understand where you're coming from, but where I'm coming from and I'm looking at the big picture, it's like we're getting ground into the dirt. And, and, and I'm not trying to grandstand here, but like as Americans and as this dissident right movement, and we're having to deal with these unprecedented obstacles like the deplatforming and the debanking and these political ops. Like you have to keep in mind, it was just two months ago that somebody put up $100,000 to tweet Fed Fuentes. And it's like, that's what we're up against. And clearly, th like this sort of thing plays into that. You got Will Somers on it and Milo. It speaks for itself. And if every time Will Somers and a gay Jew like Milo runs an op on us, the people people are going to dwell on it and they're going to bicker about it and they're, they're going to vent their emotions about it and everything, uh, no individual can survive that. No individual, no matter how righteous or anything, can survive that, that kind of thing. If every time an accusation was leveled at me, by some journalist like Somers or some Jew like Milo or some paid person who, you know, again, they, they got this influenceable campaign money to tweet out a hashtag. Uh, eventually, some's got to give and people are going to say, OK, well, you know, this is last straw. That's the last straw. That's why the loyalty has to be uh, virtually absolute insofar as I am fulfilling my job, which is to advance America first and the message of Christianity, and doing it in a successful way. I feel like the, the only thing that people should have a problem with me is if I'm not successful. And if, I, if I'm not, in terms of the product, pushing our principles. Like, when Rob Smith goes on the stage, you know, that, then I agree, I failed. Mm -hmm. But so, sometimes... 
you, you got to talk to people you don't like. Sometimes you got to talk to people that are that are bad people. And um, you know, if you're not, if people aren't comfortable with that, well, you know, you're not going to be a happy camper because that's what politics is. If if you're not comfortable with that, you know, join the priesthood. Go go start a nonprofit. You go build the uh, churches in Nicaragua or something. But if you're trying to take over right wing politics and launch an effective opposition, yeah, you know what? Like sometimes it gets a little ugly. And again, let's be realistic about what we're t- I mean, I'm talking about it like I'm Al Capone or something. We're talking about I maintained a working relationship with Ali over the years that resulted in me speaking at a few rallies. You know, or the same thing with Milo. Once again, a friendly working relationship that resulted in Marjorie being at AFPAC and me sitting at the table with Donald Trump. We're not talking, I mean, the way that people talk about it, it's like, I don't even know what. So that's what I have to say. And I'm I'm being very candid with you about that uh, because, I, of course, yeah. I could go out and tell everybody what they want to hear and say, if I had known that, I I would have never, I regret it, I'm so sorry. But you know what, that's just not the truth. And if I if I were held to that standard, uh, it would it would keep me in this paralysis that it would prevent me from acting the way I need to act. I mean, how many people? I mean, because then we'd have to, you know, then Smiley be gone, and so, so many people that could do favors for this movement and could do things for us. You know, now that's off the table, and you know, some people say, "Well, that that's how it ought to be," and you know, um, if that's what was being proposed, I'd say okay, but. Uh, all the people that have these criticisms, they haven't done half of what I've done. So clearly that's not the case. Everybody comes in and they say, oh, oh, you know, I, you should have known better. I knew you shouldn't have done this. I knew you shouldn't. And I'm like, what do you mean? I feel like I got a pretty sweet deal. Marjorie came to AFPAC. I was a part of Stop the Steal. I, uh, you know, I'm now personal friends with Kanye West, advising him as he's now one of the most prominent vocal opponents of the Semitic Mafia. It's like, I think it's a pretty, people go, oh, you know, but now they're attacking you. I don't give a shit, you know? So, anyway, I, that's always been my philosophy. And um, I feel like it's that, this balance, that's what's made me successful. It's this balance of, on the one hand, I'm obviously somebody that's unwavering in my commitment and my principles and authentic and all of that. But on the other hand, I'm also willing to do what it takes without necessarily compromising. So, you know, what's the rule that would have prevented those things? Don't don't talk to people that are gay in politics. Well, you can't talk to anybody in politics then, because guess what? I mean, they're all fucking gay. Um, you know, and... Uh, and and I and by the way, by the way, and I'm gonna say this. I look at Patrick Casey, Jaden, Jake Lloyd, I look at them the exact same way. These are people who serve their purpose. I never liked I like Jaden actually. I like Jake okay. Patrick, you know what? I actually like Patrick okay too. But uh, honestly, when all of them fled. None of them hurt my feelings. Jaden hurt my feelings a little bit, but the rest of them, not at all. Patrick Casey was always a douchebag. And if you know the lore on that, he came around during Groyper War and kind of bandwagoned onto it. And you know what? I accepted it. You want to know why? Because he had the manpower to put on AFPAC 1. I had never put on an event before, but Patrick Casey could use his guys to do it. The thing is, Patrick didn't have any kind of speaker that would bring somebody out to an event. So, you know, the, and a deal was struck there. Now, maybe Patrick and these other guys got it twisted and they thought that, you know, this is a big friendship club or something. But no, Patrick came in and he played a part. He asked a good question at Ohio State and he was a streamer and he he kind of acted as like sort of a prime minister type figure, managerial, middle management role, and he played his role well. And then when he was out, he was discarded by... Fuck you. And same thing with Jake Lloyd. Jake Lloyd was always a lazy sack. He, that's why he got laid off from InfoWars. That's why he could never make money on his own. He tried to be a YouTuber for a long time. It didn't quite take off like it did for me. Because he just doesn't have a work ethic or talent. 
But once again, he was another person who, hey, here's a guy who's doxxed and is America first. He's a speaker that we could put a Groyper Leadership Summit, throw him in. And he knows Harrison, and they could set up the AV equipment at AFPAC-1. Another one who served his purpose. Now exit stage left. Bye. And same thing with Jaden. I had a conversation with Jaden in January 2021, and I told him, listen, pal. I said, at the end of the day, we're here for America first. What exactly do you do around here? You do nothing. So you either focus up and get it together, or you know we're not going to be friends anymore. And when he didn't get it together, guess what happened? I said, bye-bye. Discarded. So, you know, and some people for that, and, and by the way, you know, a lot of the critics, they are hitting the nail on the head a little bit with me because they say, he's a jerk. He's a sociopath. Well, I'm not a sociopath. I actually have a tremendous amount of empathy, but I do have a sociopathic commitment to accomplishing my goals. And so if I need to sociopathically use Patrick Casey to organize AFPAC-1, even though I don't really like him and he did a shitty job, guess what? He did He did a perfunctory job, and we pulled it off with Michelle Malkin, and that was our first event. And to go from zero to one is the hardest part. So you know what? It worked. And people used to say back then, they said, do you have any regrets now that Patrick betrayed you? I said, no, because that's just the course of things. People come in, they play their part, and they go out. And the constant is me. The constant is America first. And uh, and that's what people, that's the only thing that people need to concern themselves about. Uh, as long as as I'm doing those things acceptably, then I, I think that people should have no problem. And, and that's the kind of leader that you want. You don't want a leader who's... Uh, thinking about the PR, thinking about the, you know, the posturing or thinking about, oh, well, is this person I'm bringing on to do the job? You know, when I have my cleaning lady to come over, do I have to do a background check on her to make sure that she's she's a morally upright person? We have people setting up the lights at AFPAC 3. Do I got to do a background check uh, on them? Mm, this is how the sausage is made. I hate to break it to you, but anybody that's yeah. ever done anything ambitious has to have this mentality. It's totally understandable. And if I could, uh, I would, I hate to interrupt, like, I'm going to make everybody mad right here. I'm going to make the, I'm going to make the hate watchers mad because I'm not going to say what they want me to say because I don't agree with them. I'm going to make the fans mad because I'm going to speak and they want to hear you speak. But I want to, in a way, play devil's advocate. But um, I want to say that I might speak for a few, though, when I say that I maybe, even just hearing you now, I think I see you differently than you see you, which I think is natural. But if I could spell that out just a little bit, like you just touched on it a minute ago, that really it's you. It's you have the work ethic and you have the talent. And when I hear you say, that if it wasn't for this or that connection with Ali or with Milo, I wouldn't have had this and that other connection with um, Marjorie or with Stop the Steal. I wouldn't have been at that event. I wouldn't have had this person on my stage. I wouldn't have been at that table with this and that person. I wouldn't have met, yay. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have. The way I see you, and you can just, obviously, I mean, just take it for what it's worth and grain of salt, but... Maybe if you want to understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, maybe why other people feel the way they do, maybe they see it like I do, but I see you as like, it's you. So I think you have enough. I believe in you in the way where it's like, you can do it on your own. Like you are the influencer. You are the voice. You have the vision. You're the man. And you don't need these people. You don't need that event. You don't need MTG. You don't need to be at Ali Alexander's rally. You don't need yay. I don't believe you need anybody. That's what. That's how I see you. You need a microphone and a camera and a green screen and whatever God blesses you with. And I don't think God is blessing you with Milo. That's how I see it. I don't think God's bringing you Ali and MTG. I don't. And the, I'm just speaking for myself. 
you don't need that stuff. So that it makes me ask, like, well, why is he going for it then? Is he giving in to temptations that I wish he didn't? See, I know I'm making everybody mad. But I'm just going to tell you, this is where I'm coming from. When I see you make those choices, I go, why did he do that? I don't, I, from, I'm on the outside. I'm not in the arena where you are. I'm just a loving supporter who's watching going like i love to see your successes but then when it comes time to pay the piper like this i go like we didn't need that like you would still be you and you'd be killing it and you also wouldn't have this scandal on your record and you also wouldn't have Jaden hating like i don't know like what other things you could maybe do without and maybe some things you some things are just are what they are but do we have to go through all of those things i know you can't see the future and neither can i but when I see you make those choices, like, like there's a spectrum between having Rob Smith on the stage, having a literal gay man represent your organization, and having no gays in the movement at all. There's a spectrum there. And somewhere in the middle, there's cozy.tv slash Ali. And it feels like, well, why are we at that part of the spectrum? I, is it so that we could be at an event? I don't think you even need to be there. I think you could still be killing it and get invited to Mar-a-Lago without doing that. And in fact, maybe you'd be there in a more respectable way if you didn't get smuggled in by Ye. Maybe if you got there on your own steam, you'd be still talking to Trump and having his ear and getting fucking Jason Miller out of there. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. Neither neither do you, I don't think. But I'm over here as a sideline spectator going, hmm, I, I, I could do without some of those choices, but I'm not in your shoes. So understand, like, I'm a loving, loyal supporter and... I'm thinking, why does he keep doing these things? And so that's what I'm asking you. Like, hindsight 2020, would you change anything? I'm just wondering, um, are all of these just absolute Ws and we have an impeccable record, or are we learning as we're going here, or what? Because now I'm taking it to some of your best friends here on the platform, your, your most loyal supporters. I mean, they're out here, they're doxing my family, they're doing grimy business. It, is it just like absolutely just pure old... Ends justify the means. Fuck it. Doc's big tech and his family because he's questioning this or that thing that got said on a stream. Um, like we just go, we just go nuts. Is that how we do it? Um, and it's just let let the chips fall where they may. And uh, any means will justify the ends that we're after because it's just it's just save America. And if like I was joking around when I said it the other day, but is it literally like I was lampooning the ridiculous concept that hey, if there's a few smileys out there, they gotta suck a few dicks for us to win America. We got it. We got. We need total Aryan victory. Sometimes the kid's gonna have to suck a dick here and oh, there. Oh well, that's, that's just it's disingenuous. Like, I know that's it's ridiculous. I know, but it's a ridiculous expression of the sort of the feeling. It's like well, if if the idea is that the ends justify the means, like well, so what is it? So what is it in terms of specificity? When you say ends justify the means. What means? are you talking about what are the means that that again what, what's the action that i have to regret or apologize for uh and ali has a cozy channel that's that's the abhorrent example, when you say well it's not, it, i mean let's not straw man dick. let's not straw that's man. what you just said yeah, right but but you cozy you surely know that it's not but sure you surely assure you that you know that what i mean that represents the whole situation like paul no but it's not represent off. it's not represent we're talking this is not well, listen it's not you the asked, world, should, of, debate. I, it's the world of politics no but answer specifically because you're now you're saying right. i'm straw manning you yeah. TV slash ali is that okay. are these the means which are abhorrent okay Paul from Cancel Proof just said, for example, on this stream, that you talk to him every day, Ali Alexander. Is that true? In December, when Ali and I were working for Ye, yes. But Paul corrected them when Wurzelroot said, yeah, back in Ye 24, he was talking to him. And Paul said, no, no, no. He still talks to Ali every day. That's because Ye 24 is still going on. Okay, so currently you're in day-to-day communication with Ali Alexander. And that makes me go, what the hell? Because he's a creep, right? Or is he not? Like, we're just associating closely with creeps. We learned about we, the smiley. But- well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. So first of all, I work for Yay. That's what the FEC filing shows. And in so far as I'm working for Yay and Ali is on there, we have to talk. Before that, prior to that, 
it's like I said, it's a loose connection. You have stop the steal, you have like two years of nothing, and then you've got yay 24. So what you're saying right now, and again, not now you're being a little bit weaselly, where you bring up what Paul is saying and all this. And again, we're talking about specificity of the means, the means that we're, you go from well, saying, that's what you asked me for, hang, on, hang on, hang on. So you go from, well, are we going to say that there we have to tolerate smileys sucking dicks in order to put America first? Now, what happened when we learned about the smiley accusations? I think the day that that came out, I said I absolutely disavow it. And within a week, Ali was removed from the cozy chat and and resigned from public life. So let's just get the timeline straight. That in December, Ali and I worked very closely on Yay24. And recently, in March and April, uh, without getting into specifics, what, you know, now you're doing the classic thing of bringing up things that I'm not really at liberty to talk about, but for reasons pertaining to, to, you. to you. I mean, you well, specifics, that is what so you're just... doing. So for reasons pertaining to that activity, we had to talk a little bit more in March and April. And then this happens, and I think every appropriate measure was taken. So again, the means that you're talking about are, once again, talking to somebody on a political team. That's the means that you find abhorrent. Talking, you know, you could say whatever you want about Ali, but talking to a person. Right. That's the problem. So we can't talk to people that are creepy. So if so, Matt Gates, Matt Gates, for example, it's, I think this is fair. Matt Gates just underwent a massive DOJ investigation for uh, banging seventeen-year-old set up by Joel Greenberg. If Matt Gates reaches out and says, "Hey, uh, want to collaborate on the America First Caucus?" I'm supposed to say, "No, no, that's creepy. We can't talk." Is that right? I I don't know. Would you associate with Matt Gates? Absolutely, 100 fucking percent tomorrow in 10 minutes if my phone rang. All right. Now, uh, if Matt Gates, about, Go ahead. It, it's, a, it's a pivot to another question. If you have more to say on that, I'm not trying to just jump from thing to thing. But the next thing on the list for me would be the thing that Ralph is initially very upset at me about, where he pulled my card because I made a stream the other day with a clickbait title that said, Nick slept with Milo which was about the fact that you revealed to us that you slept in a hotel room alone with Milo Yiannopoulos on the floor, which I thought was a strange choice for you to make, to sleep, to spend the night in a hotel room with Milo. And I wonder why would you choose to do that? Like, I, I, I'm assuming, I'm filling in the blanks, I'm assuming you could get your own room, especially when you found out there's only one bed. This is extra crazy. Why were you even, like, I wouldn't even, I... I, I'm like, no shit, I would not even go in Milo's hotel room, especially knowing that if anybody found out that I was in there alone with him, it would look crazy, and I wouldn't are want you, to put that on other people. Are you a to... grown-up? Yeah, 40 years okay. old. Okay, okay. So, uh, ew, 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 uh, sleep in the same room. We didn't sleep in the same bed. We didn't sleep in the same sleeping bag. He slept on the bed. I slept on the floor. We had just, in case you don't know. So it's just crazy for me to think that that's like a, it's just, it's just, I, like, I just wouldn't. Knowing Milo, it's not like I was so there with my is, work, but it's not like we're two linemen okay. who are out of town. We're going to go fix the power line. And this is my bro who have known a long time. And I know his wife and his kids. And, you know, we're going to just like save money and bunk up in a double room. That's fine. But it's Milo Yiannopoulos. And I'm like, I just for the sake of, in case anybody had found out that I did that, just for the sake of appearances, I'd be like, no, 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 we can't do that. I can't let any people think that I stayed in the same room with you. I wouldn't put that on them to imagine what took place in there. Yeah, I understand. So let me let me just get this straight. So when you are playing devil's advocate and say, well, where do we draw the line about the ends justifying the means? You know, because you, you said there's a slippery slope here. Are we going to get to a ridiculous proposition that we would tolerate um, child rape, essentially, to put America first. And I say, well, that's disingenuous. We're obviously not talking about that. I said, what specifically is the conduct that you think, uh, the means that you do not think justify the ends? And so far, you said uh, talking to somebody who's creepy, 
and sleeping in the same hotel room as somebody. Now, keep in mind, like Charles Johnson said the other night, uh, the prime minister of Israel is attacking me. People put up hundreds of thousands of dollars to attack me. I've been doing this for years. I'm banned from banks, airlines, social media. I run one of the top five biggest conservative conferences in the country. I'm one of the biggest conservative live streamers, aside from people that are signed, like Crowder and, and others. I mean, you look at anybody that's remotely similar, like an Alex Stein or John Doyle, they can't get half my audience. Doyle, in Doyle's case, not even a tenth of my audience on a live stream. I've been doing this for a long time. The most that has been dug up about what I've been willing to do to further my ends that we have are things such as I slept in the same room as somebody. I talked to somebody that's creepy. End of list. If you're looking and waiting around for a movement or a leader to come forward that is this consistent, that is this relevant, this and you question the success of America first, I'd say pretty influential, all things considered. And also has so little scandal and so little impropriety that the most that you could say is slept in the same room as Milo, talked to Ali for a little while before found out what was going on and then immediately disavowed, I think you're in pretty good shape. And dwelling on this, which is something that is, you know, like I said, what you are talking about and what is being talked about publicly are very different things. What is being insinuated by Marjorie Green and Milo is that I was an apologist or covered up some kind of pedophile ring, which for people that know the facts is the furthest thing from the truth. It's actually literally the opposite. It was the people accusing me of this that sat on that evidence for over a year. And it was me that acted swiftly and decisively uh, and took every appropriate action afterwards. But you come on here and you talk about this and you drag this out and weigh in on this when you know full well what people are accusing me of. And again, the conduct is uh, a talk to Ali when we work together on two separate things, Stop the Steal and the A24, and, and didn't sleep with Milo, didn't sleep in a bed with Milo, slept in a room with Milo for one night. And how, does, in case, how, does, how does sleeping in a room with Milo help to further your ends? That's the way you framed it a second ago. What? A second ago, if I, we roll back the tape, if I heard it right, you said the things that you've done to further That's what the you ends said. of America first. I questioned. I said, what, what means specifically do you have a problem with? And you said, Ali. I said, okay, so should I not talk to Matt Gates? Then you right. said, well, what about sleeping in the same room as Milo? I said, yeah. Like sleeping in the same room as Milo is something that falls into the category of, you know, for one night, something that I could tolerate and listen. I mean, in that okay. situation, it's so are you, know, you first saying, of all, you're just saying, like, I mean, hang on, so, hang on. So now you're interrupting me. But right. if, you, if you must know, so I flew out to D.C. actually to have several meetings in mid-November. And the first meeting I had was with Milo because we were talking specifically about Yay. And we had dinner, and we talked about it, and then I went back to my hotel, and then I texted him around midnight, and I said, hey, is this thing really going to happen? I said, because I feel like you're just yanking my chain. And he goes, well, I'll text him and say that we're going to come out to L.A. tomorrow. I said, really, tomorrow? He's, he goes, yeah. So we book flights for 5 a.m. Uh, I go to bed at 1. I wake up four hours later. I hop in the car. We fly to L.A., we link up with Ye, and then we're with Ye all evening. I think we get back finally to a hotel at midnight or 1 a.m. We go to the hotel. I think there was just one room available, maybe, maybe not. But we go into the hotel and crash. And then I woke up the next morning and got a separate hotel and stayed there for the remainder of my time in L.A. from November to December. And this is, but the, but you insinuate that I'm gay for doing that, and you insinuate I'm not that insinuating this is, uh, that. To be that honest, is, I'm, I'm not. I, that's what you titled your stream. You put in your stream, Nick is gay. No, it's not. What I put in my stream was Nick slept with Milo. Okay, there you go. Which so, is haha funny because you slept in the room with Milo. Yeah, yeah, I get it. it. But it's so. not saying that you're gay. It's saying why did you do that? 
And so you're saying it was just like for convenience. And it, are you, so are you telling me it was just like, I just didn't even think it was a big deal. And if that's it, yeah, because, then that's it. What, do, you, do you think it's a big deal? Yeah. yeah okay. I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't then, have done it. Well, that's why you're you and I'm me, I guess. F- that's fine. I'm just fine. That's I'm fine with that. But I'm me. I mean, that you're, you're on my show and you're asking me why am I doing this. I'm like, well, there are certain things like this. And you're saying, like, I talked to, my, to Ali. It's like, well, talk. I mean, I talked to... Uh, I don't talk to my barber because I don't have one, but I talk to the people at the checkout and I talk to my mom and I talk to different people, different ways. But you talk to Ali in relation to like a big project that you're all working on together. So you talk in, in I'm, I literally, I'm just assuming I'm filling the blanks, but this is like strategic talk and all sorts of talk. This is like a, I don't mean intimate gay, but there's like, there's more of an intimacy there than just talking. It's like, Hey, what's up? How you been? I'm assuming it's just an assumption, but uh, your talking is in relation to essentially like you're in a type of a working partnership with him in a, in a collab you're collaborating with. And these are, these are choices that to me, they're questionable just as much as sleeping together in the hotel with Milo. I would have thought like, I don't know if I want to do that. He would have had to twist my arm and there'd have to be no other room. And I'd be like, ah, oh, I just can't stay awake another minute. I'll crash on your floor. I hope nobody finds out about this. Why are you afraid that you would actually like uh, have sex with Milo if that were the case? Is that why? No, are you secretly gay? No, I've caught, no, that's not that. It's just literally just why? for. Well, for the appearance, literally just for the appearance. I wouldn't well, want to put it on the other people. Where, where is anyone? Where is that appearing anywhere? Well, the it's appearance. appearing in front of everybody now. Everybody knows now. Yeah, now it is after the fact. Yeah. And I would have like wanted to. So you, so you govern them. your entire life based on things that may or may not appear and how they would be perceived. Well, I, 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 I like, I don't do things that I like. Don't want people to find out about. Like, yeah, I don't would, really like, care. I don't really care that people. I mean, once again, what we're talking about here is so juvenile, and and it just gets to what is this really about? I mean. Just cards on the table. Are I mean, are you against me? Is this like some big play or something? I mean, seriously, no, because no. I mean, at Everybody this point, who this watches my show and knows this me line knows of inquiry absolutely is just not the case. Well, you look, you're asking me why we got here, and I'm getting. I admonished you. I didn't. I'm not really that curious. I'm admonishing you, okay. and I'm saying that you know this this entire this whole train of thinking is is wrong. It's disloyal and it's wrong and. You know, we and it's a perfect example. Like I said, we do a space yesterday. There's another organization which happens to be the biggest group in the country, which says that if you're not pro-Israel, you get kicked out. And rather than talk about that tonight, you're talking about how I slept in a hotel room for one night with the wrong person. Not slept with, slept <laughs> literally was sleeping inside of the same hotel room as somebody else. Like, and that just speaks to you know, and that that's the that's the contrast. That's the money shot is last night. Chief Trumpster, another cozy streamer. And this guy's doesn't even show his face, pulls together everybody to BTFO, a 50 million dollar year organization that maintains a blacklist on every young conservative who opposes Israel. And rather than talk about that tonight, you give the play by play on that. You're going to talk about the fact that in November. I slept physically slept, was sleeping in the same room as somebody else for one night. Well, look, you've asked me to give examples. I've given two. I mean, we could keep going like on. Like I said, that's the money like shot. you're here to field that. The money, that's not the subject of the street. I the, mean, well, the I'm fielding is it. That, I fielded it. Yeah, well, yeah. What's the other? Let's go on that. So, so let's see. So I talked to Ali uh, and collaborated with him on Stop the Steal and Yay 24. And I slept in the same channel. room with Milo. Well, well, let's go down the list. What else? Um. Yeah, that's really yeah. I mean, we're dealing with a gay sex scandal here, so I'm talking about the gay. Okay. What, what else is there besides the gay you guys? You said, right? but you just said the list goes on and on. You go, we could go on. Let's let's go on. What's what's the next item? Okay, you we're say dealing the with ends the gay. Justify the means. We're dealing Where with does the gay. it end? Yeah, we're dealing with the gay like sex scandal. There. <laughs> seems we're, like it just ended right there. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is we're dealing with a gay sex scandal because of the gay guys that you've associated with. Right. And. So it's like, and now that's like part of, and you're saying I should be talking about other stuff, but that's like, that's, we're, that's, we're all in that now. We're all in a gay sex scandal. Mm, we're not. Okay. 
the thing, okay, then the now, now you're putting this on me. And now you're saying that Milo manufacturing a smear against me. Milo doing basically exactly what everybody knew Milo was going to do. He did what we all could have predicted he would do. Oh, so you're saying, so you're saying that, uh, that like, that makes it okay. The like, what? Okay. No, it's more like so you're well, saying, everybody knew this you know, was going to happen. Milo, if you, if you, Milo betrayed Nick Fuentes. That's Nick Fuentes' fault. Well, it's the old saying. Like I know he said, listen. Like, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. They said. That's not what my dad said. He said oh, no, no, you your gotta, dad said the other thing about you obey the rules till you make the rules. Got to play by the rules until you make the rules. And um, listen, I, I stand by what I say. And the thing is, um, you know, it's clear that you – can't see the bigger picture here. You're not, you're clearly not one. You're not, I know you're not a team player. Like you're clearly in it for yourself. Well, I'm not a yes man. So if you well, got to support uh-huh. Israel to be part what, of that that's other what group, Jaden used to if tell this me. group, that's what if this group say. is, you got to be a yes man or you can't be in it. There it is. There it is. Everyone who is loyal to me is just a sycophant. I'm not, I'm not disloyal, Nick. I'm just not a sycophant. Like all well, your I'm supporters. I'm not a seething hater. I'm not a seething hater of you at no, all. No, but you, you are, you are not on this. You're not with me. You don't really support me. You're in this for your own benefit. You're in this for your own clout. You're in this for your own play. Because if you were really about pushing, because this is a political movement, if you're really about pushing this political operation, you would be doing things to support it, not doing things to undermine it. And if you cannot countenance. I think that what I'm doing is good for this movement and for you. No, it's at playing into a Jewish psyop against it. So anytime that there's a trying to hit dodge piece it like you're me, doing is a mistake. And it's not as in what the, way is it a dodge? Here I am confronting the. See, there it is again with this like verbal trickery. Uh, it's no, here I, I literally I am. I think you are dodging it by pointing the finger back and saying, "No, no, no! It's just Milo. Milo's attacking me. That's all this is. I didn't make any mistakes. It's that's not what Milo. I said. That's, that's not what I. And hang on, I appreciate hearing. if you don't interrupt me. I appreciate if you don't interrupt me. So, uh, very interesting how this how this has progressed because I I believe that I addressed everything that you're talking about. If it's the Ali thing, the Milo thing, you asked me, do you have any regrets? Would you do it differently? Would, would you associate Matt Gates? I think I went over the entire decision-making process pretty clearly and a pretty big overview. And yeah. now you're going to tell me I'm dodging it? What I'm saying is that this, and I addressed this earlier, there's a thing in itself, and then there's the fact that it's clearly being manufactured. And it is, because if this was some kind of pressing issue, it's not a dodge. I've been addressed, I addressed it on my show last Wednesday. I addressed it on my show on Monday. I addressed it. All throughout this week, every aspect of it. I talked to Smiley directly. I talked to everybody involved. Um, no, I don't mean that you're dodging like not addressing. I'm saying you're dodging like your responsibility, culpability. What I'm saying is this, is that when you come in here and you're playing, because it's what it is is a hit piece. I mean, you understand that, right? Do you think that Daily Beast yeah. and Will Somers are, right. <laughs> are, are right. writing this to help America first? Right. No. But a hit okay. piece doesn't make it uh, untrue. Uh, okay, so the hit piece is true, is what you're saying. No, what I'm saying is if you hadn't made the choices you made that led up to this moment, this hit piece wouldn't be existing in this way. Hit, so what you're saying is that uh, hit pieces are entirely in my control, that like no hit pieces would be written about me if I just took different actions. Is no, that there's a saying? lot of hit, hit pieces that are going to be made oh, up out of thin air, okay. but some but, but are just not. this one, but, but this, this one is, oh, is this one made okay. up out of thin air? But this air? one, yeah, basically is because the, the oh. thesis of the hit piece is that I was involved in a cover up. There would be no hit piece right. if they wrote the facts, which is that Milo sat on it for a year and it was only revealed to me. And I disavowed it immediately. You know, like that, those are the facts, which we've just gone over. But you seem to, and and this is the problem. This is what I'm talking about. This attitude of, oh, a hit piece was written about you. Well, in some way, that's like your fault. Oh, someone's attacking you for something that's like basically bullshit. Well, that's your fault. You could have prevented that. Listen, man, uh, we're involved in an opposition political movement. People are going to talk shit. They're going to write hit pieces. It's literally their job. If there's nothing there, they invent things. That's literally what this is. Milo for weeks talked shit about me, knowing the smiley thing, knowing all this. And then a light bulb went off and said, oh, yeah, I remember. Here's the thing I'm going to throw and see if it'll stick. 
So, um, so yeah, I mean, at this point, it's very, you've just exposed yourself. You don't give a shit about America first. You don't give a shit about me. I pay for your bandwidth on this site. I gave you a channel. I gave you a platform to do this. And what you've done, like a, like a parasite, has come in here and take advantage of all that and then turn around and try to undermine me and put on this charade like you're this, oh, I'm playing devil's advocate. I'm just this honest broker. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of it. You're not. This whole this whole line of inquiry is disingenuous. You're getting on my case because I slept in the same room as Milo, and, well, you wouldn't do that because if it got out, it would look bad. It would look a certain way. I mean, give me a break. Like, this entire thing is a load of shit from start to finish. Um, and and, no, it and does you should look know bad. better. It does look bad. You were so close with okay. Milo that you slept in a room with him, and he's a snake, and you should have known that. Okay. Everybody. You're knew you're that. a snake. You're a snake. The real mistake is I should have fired yeah. your fucking ass and kicked you off this platform. That's a mistake I made. Talk about, oh, he was a snake. At least Milo got me in touch with Ye and brought Marjorie Green to AFPAC. What the fuck have you ever done for anybody in this How space? How did Marjorie other than even help us being at AFPAC? She oh, sucks. made it the number one biggest conference most talked about more than CPAC? Hello? How about Great. conferring massive credibility onto the movement by having one of the number one congresswomen in America speak there? I mean, do you even and, think about these and then things? She, and then she and then she disavows us sometime later, like credibility through the roof. Now she played the tap dance like everybody has to do, and everyone knows that. The left knows that. That's why they still post pictures of her with me a year later, because everybody knows that's how it works. And by the way, that's another critic. So you're really so sitting sort of on hurts all her the, more on, than it helps sure. us. So you're all so you're sitting on all these criticism. It reminds me a lot of like culture war criminal, where you really are sitting on all these criticisms. You talk about how I was smuggled into Mar-a-Lago. Talk about how Marjorie Green disavowed me after AFPAC. Yeah. Milo, Ali, you don't like Ethan Ralph. So really, you're just full Ethan of Ralph. shit. So you're just sitting on all this venom. And now it seems like it's finally, you know, now you're losing the argument. You got to find all this. And now very conveniently reach into the stockpile of your uh, hey, top super chatter, Red Pill Gaming. Loving you ammo. does not cause me to not see your flaws. Right. That's what I've heard that many times before by people who are stabbing me in the back. They tell me, well, I'm just not a sycophant. You know, listen, man, if you saw my flaws or something, you know, maybe you'd reach out to me privately. Maybe you'd do it in a judicious way. But to go and title your stream, Nick slept with Milo. That's not that's just was, seeing my flaws. I was not banking on you being this reactive. So it's contingent on my reaction. Yeah. Got it. Well, listen, I mean, I don't know what we're going to do with your channel. I mean, I'm not, I don't know that I'm going to ban you for being critical of me. It's, we're sort of in a gray area here with Cozy, but I mean, you, you're not America first. You don't support me. And that's evidence of it. Like I said, it's, it's not about criticism. I could take the criticism and I answer the questions and all this. The entire Milo and Ali thing has been discussed to death, every aspect of it. I've released screenshots. I've interviewed everybody involved, Smiley and Ali. Smiley even put out a statement defending me and with the same position. Um, and the same goes for all the other parts of it, the Marjorie thing, the Mar-a-Lago thing. Um, you know, but but this is something else. This is this uh incessant critique it's this death by a thousand cuts and that's what i'm getting at if we have this opposition movement and the goal of the opposition because they i mean they've done everything they could do to me now except for kill me now what they rely on is we want to break his base of support by convincing his audience that he's a bad guy you know milo is actually very astute milo went out there and he didn't say nick is gay because he knew that everyone would categorize that and say oh he's just another a logger oh he's just another disingenuous piece of shit so instead he said oh nick's not a real catholic because milo's as a gay guy is very clever in in the social dynamics he says oh i know i'll attack him where his where his uh legitimacy comes from and i'll hit him in a place where people don't normally go from and so that's the new play. That's what the Max Blumenthal hit piece was about. That when they insinuate I'm a Fed, it's the same thing. It's about it's about bad jacketing somebody and saying the person you support is bad actor Fed, this and that, whatever. Um, you know, so that that is something that is real. That's something that's going on. And if you can't see that or don't see that or you're in on it, you know, 
I can't, I can't associate with you because you are not a team player. And the, the first sign of doubt that you have, you're going to go publicly and flame me and you're going to cultivate a live chat full of people shitting on me. It's indistinguishable from Milo, a Jew, I think you or can Will Somers. It. I think you're fine. Of course I, I can. I yeah, can handle you anything. You can handle it. But so it's you honestly, are not a it's like, who cares? I think you can handle it. And let me ask you this. You can tell me. Who benefits from me making everybody on Cozy hate me and all the A-logs will hate me? I'll stay here and support your ass. And everybody on Cozy hates me now and all your haters hate me too because I'm staying here to support you. So how did I benefit by fucking my whole thing up? I'm a snake for what? Who benefits? K-Bono. This is your biggest stream in a year, is it not? So cool. I make – great. I got some viewers. I make a few extra hundred <laughs> bucks. Great. Okay. It was, all for, it was a big ploy for an extra $400, right? Well, look. I don't, you're right. I don't know what's on your heart. You're right about that. I don't know what your intentions are. And, you know, they could be I, – I, and I'm a little bit naive, okay? I try to see the best in people, and, and I don't know. But I am, I am telling you that from where I'm sitting, the, the way that you're acting right now, I mean, it's either incredibly ignorant or it looks like it's bad faith. But it, there's not a whole lot of in-between where you're, like, s- smart enough to see it for what it is, in which case – you know, you'd have you have to be a bad actor, or you're you're not smart enough. Maybe you just don't see it from the same. Or it's perspective, just literally what case. I'm telling you. I think this is going to help you, and I'm trying to help. And well, you don't and, agree, and, listen, and we disagree, and that's fine. And fair enough. And and for what it's worth, you know, I think it's appropriate for there to be some space where people can vent or whatever. You know, because I I get it. You know, I get. I understand where you're coming from, and even some people in your live chat. I don't agree with all of it. I get it, and I'm arguing my case here, obviously. Um, so I'm not. So I'm not. Gonna, I don't want to ban you. I don't want people to think of me as like, oh, you know, I'm going around banning people because they don't agree with me or whatever. But at the moment, like I, you, like I don't consider you in good standing. I don't really trust you, um, and and all I'm saying is. I wish you could see the bigger picture because I I do <laughs> I do actually like you. I think you're a good streamer in spite of our disagreement. Um and I just wish that it would be productive for our bigger goal here, which is like clearly and I and I hope you don't think that's a dodge. People don't think that's a dodge, but we're taking on something much bigger and people taking chunks out of me. In other words, it's like when you say, oh, I'm, I'm doing you a big favor, it's like there are so many people doing me the big favor of shitting my, on me every day. You know what I'm saying? Like there are so many people doing me this big favor of shitting on me and playing up uh, rumors about me or criticizing me or undermining my, my reputation or my legitimacy or my leadership abilities. There are not a lot of people that are out there as soldiers fighting alongside me or behind me to do the right thing in the country. So that's yeah. all that I consider. That's all I ask people to consider. I used to say the same thing to other people. It's like people say, oh, I, you know, I'm, criti- I'm just giving you the criticism. It's like, believe me, I get plenty. There is so much criticism. So many people doing me that favor to go around. Yeah. And it's not that I don't think about it or whatever. But, uh, you know, when you do this, people consider it. Like, why do you think people like RPG are giving you super chats? It's because they see you as an opening to undermine me from the inside. They see you as a defector that if they're going to throw some shekels your way and they're going to be nice to you, they see you as somebody who can rally people inside my camp against me. So, you know, well, when look, you say, you well, I'm just not yourself, a sycophant. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I remember you said it recently. You were coming into a perspective of yourself that is literally how I've already seen you. I'm ahead of you on this, Nick. I see it the way you expressed it the other night. You're their leader, too. You said it the other night, and I know you know what I mean, but you're RPG's leader too. You are their leader too, and so in a way, I'm I'm not advocating for their hatred of you or to take you down. I'm like, these are thoughts, these are things that they need to hear from you on as their leader too, and I'm trying to like bring this out because I think you're everybody's leader. You're the guy. Even these people who hate you, they have these feelings, and you can't – I mean, you can, but I'm trying to get you to not just close them out. I think you can reach everybody, and I'm, like, really 
I think that you can handle it. I think you you have the integrity, you have the strength. I think you can take criticism from the outside and from the inside, and you can handle it all, and everybody will be better for it. That's what I'm trying to do, right or wrong. That's what I'm trying to do. Maybe I'm an idiot, but I think that I I see something maybe not everybody else sees, and I'm asking wow. questions that I think should be asked, and I think there's good answers to them that when we hear them from you, everybody goes, ah, oh. and that's what I'm pushing for. Well, you're right about that. I am the leader for everybody. Nevertheless, many of them will be killed when we take power. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> many, many of them will, will be decapitated. <laughs> hey, if you got to take my head at the end of all this, you can have it. Race to be seen. Race to be seen. But, um, but, but it, you know, in all seriousness... It's a precarious situation where people consider you to be on my side and then you undermine me by attacking me. Yeah. And I know. people I know. say, it's not, it's not, I've lost faith. I, I, that's fine. I mean, I, I hate that. I hate that that's the case. But I think, uh, I think time tells and, um, and I, I know myself. And the people who know me know me. People who watch my stream regularly know I am, I'm nothing else but an advocate for you. And this is how I deal with a gay sex scandal, all right? This is just how I do it. I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not trying to hurt anybody here. I'm not trying to hurt Ralph. I'm not trying to hurt uh, Beardson and, and uh, Wurzel Fat, even though I have beef with them right now. It's personal because they went off on me and did some things that I thought were very unkind, so we're clapping back. But I'm, like, I think, I think my presence is W here, and I wouldn't stay here if I didn't think so. That's what I think. Okay, well, like I said... People are saying, oh, you know, Nick's going to uh, ban you. And, I mean, and, listen, uh, the only fat, thing is uh, you can't, right you can't stream copyrighted stuff. Kind, so so I didn't watch that. the whole stream. But People I'm, told me that you like, were streaming I think, I think content my from behind. Is here, and Beards I wouldn't stay here if I didn't think so. That, I just, right. that is against the TOS. I mean, I don't know. Something behind, copyrighted content? Yeah, if you're streaming stuff from behind Beardson's paywall, you can't do that. But other than that, I'm not going to take you out for uh, criticizing me. Oh, this is a video I have from Telegram. I know they do paywall it, but I'm not on their site. I guess that's gray, but um, but I'm not on their I didn't pay to get on their site, and then I'm sharing what's behind. But um, I guess – but does that mean so that so the way for me to hide my content from being – so if I put all my stuff behind a paywall, that means Mio and Brittany can't A-log me anymore? If Yeah, if it's exclusively behind your paywall – and oh. you don't give people permission to use it. Yo, base. Didn't know that. And, you know, listen, and for what it's worth, I would appreciate if everybody stood down, okay? You, Tenryo, uh, Mio, Wurzel, Beardson. The, the statement here, the headline is, we need to direct the firepower uh, not at me, First and foremost, but also not at each other. And I, you know, if they're, I don't know if they're doxing your family. You say it. Uh, I, I haven't seen. I have not been paying attention to the drama. But, um, but if that's the case, I think they should stop. And I think everybody should focus on doing stuff like Chief Trumpster. You know, there's a big situation going on in the country that's bigger than this, which is that the country is controlled by Jews and. People need to be trying to solve that problem and trying to criticize that problem and think of ways that they can tackle it. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm one man. I'm a one man band out here and I'm doing everything I can. And when I see a guy like Chief Trumpster go out and do that stream, it's like finally somebody who's going to lighten my burden and make my life easier and not harder. When I see drama I'm like, seriously, this is more inane bullshit that's going to make my life harder. When I see you coming at me, and you know what, like, it's, it's gone on for too long now. Like, as far as I'm concerned, that has been settled. I've talked about it for like, it's now a week, two weeks old, you know, so you vented about that. Instead of talking about hit pieces about me from Will Somers and being sympathetic to them, Let's push that somewhere else. Let's let's lighten my load. Let's not make my life more difficult by, uh, you know, carrying the site on Saturday and playing more into this stuff. That's my message because it's a bigger thing. I mean, do, if everybody in here fails, guess what? All that's left is turning point. 
at the end of the day, if if everybody on this site is taking shots at each other and we all go down and we all make each other weaker, you know who gets stronger? The Jews. And the you, you mean you if you have a problem with gay pedophiles, guess what's full of them? Con Inc. So um I mean that's just like a tale as old as time, right? Which is that people are gonna get in on this thing which is really fake. And who's the prime beneficiary? It's actually the mafia of gay pedophiles. I mean, Rick Rennell and all these other characters that we'd see on Twitter all the time that they're cover for them in Turning Point and that are in the populist ink movement and everywhere. So, you know, that that's when I say big picture. It's not, a, it's not evasive. It's not a dodge. It's just like, let's put things in their proper perspective. Let's look at specificity. Um, let's consider what standards we're applying. I try to meet you halfway on some of this stuff. I think yeah, I, I, I appreciate that. And I hope, I hope you can go away from this also. I mean, you're coming into it. You're like, what the hell? Why is he streaming this stuff? Uh, I'm not trying to, even in this stream while we, I'm speaking to you and I'm addressing you about your involvement in this stuff because that's what it came to, but I'm, I'm messing with Beardson. I mean, this, I was just, I was just dunking on Beardson because of some stuff he said when he was drunk on this stream. And by the way, somebody just reminded me that he did say that it was fine to play clips, just not the full episodes. So oh, okay. Well, but, in that case. But, uh, but yeah, I was just trying, I was just dunking on Beardson because he did a big old Twitter, he did a Twitter space with Brittany and Mio and Wurzel where they just sat around powwowing about how much they hate me and I suck and I'm the worst. Why do they hate you? What's, well, uh, I mean, yeah, because, I know why uh, I don't like yeah, you. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Well, because this is because I'm like this because I because uh, I'm relentless and uh, and I and I'm I, I nitpick a little bit, but also I was standing up for Tenryo the other night because Tenryo was broken hearted. He was saying he wanted to quit the platform, and the problem was with Mio. He's been an old friend with Mio, and Mio is a rat. Mio doesn't love Tenryo, doesn't show him any love, disrespects him. Brittany goes off on Tenryo, does this big old 30-minute rant some time ago, and Mio's right there with her, egging her on and co-signing and essentially, like, gaslighting the whole situation. It hurt Tenryo's feelings really bad, and I've got beef with Mio, too. He's done the same to me. And so when Tenryo was feeling bad, I joined arms with Tenryo. I said, bro, let's get the, rally the troops. Mio is a scumbag, and he is, by the way. And let's, Why? What's, let, your, what's your beef with Mio? Is it because you and him are like fighting over Britney or something? That's what everybody says, and no, that's not what it is. It's literally <laughs> because it's because he uh, he's a liar. He lied about me a lot of times. He spent weeks and weeks and weeks telling false stories about me to hurt my reputation, slandering me. He's basically like a gossiper. And I tried to talk to him man-to-man -man multiple times. He uh, spins everything I say in bad faith, put, says it right back to me, not the way I said it. And then I lost respect for him after some time. And then he gaslights Brittany every time Brittany is upset about something. He sits there egging her on and essentially like, uh, you know, doing that thing of, uh, you know, he cosigns on it. He emboldens it and he's an instigator. And then every time he gets called to task on any of this stuff, he hides behind Brittany. And then Brittany comes up and she plays cute and she does like a fake apology and he gets away with it over and over. And um, he just like, he's... That's just uh, my experience with Mio. So I'm not here to like complain about him, but that's the backstory. But so I'm handling it myself. It's like, all right, this guy is a rat and he sucks and and he hurt Tenryo. And I'm like, all right, well, I got a uh, you know enemy of my enemy is my friend. So I'm friends with Tenryo. I'm talking with Tenryo. Wurzel Root comes in. I'm like, let's boys, we need to put up a front and demand that Mio starts acting respectably toward the rest of us because the shit that goes on on their channels, like whatever, we can't hold Brittany responsible. She's a girl. Of course she's going to act like that. She's a godless Jewish girl. She's not a Christian. She's a woman. Why would you complain to Brittany? Talk to Mio if there's a problem over there. Mio's the man in the relationship. Mio's one of the guys. He calls himself a groiper. He's America first, and he stands up for us in a way that, by the way, I should say, it's embarrassing. Um, but he's a dick. And, he, and then he hides behind Brittany. So I said, let's go after Mio together. Let's, provide a, let's have a unified front. Men, demand from Mio that he starts acting like a man, and then he can be in good graces with us. But until then, we shun him. We go to war against him. We, he's not our friend. You're out or you're in. Which one is it? And if you're with us, you need, to, you need to stand up against her. So I was, I was doing some, some, some tough love with the Mio kid. And um, Well, I mean, come on. Like, so you're, you're older. Tenryo's in his 30s. Mio's in yep. his 30s. Right. And like Henry was in the live chat, you wanted to go to war. I said it was a bad idea. It's like, yeah. can we can we all just like forgive one another? 
love speech. Forgive yep. Mio today. Forgive Tenryo. Why? What? What is he? Because we've already tried that. We've already tried that oh, several times. We've already been my there. Gosh. So, but so you forgive the rat, and he goes, "Hey, forgive me. I forgive you too. It's all cool. I love you, man." And then he goes right back to doing it the next day. What? What is he doing though? That's like bad. He's, so he's taking you out of context, or yeah, that kind of stuff. And with Tenryo, for example, he's just like sort of mogging him on Twitter and he's got a big audience over there that he has because of Britney and they're all super toxic and they send him Tenryo's way and he's dealing with all this like runoff from Mio and it extra hurts Tenryo again because he's an old friend with Mio. But, uh, Uh, but with me, it's like I closed the door on him back in uh, like halfway through January. I did a final stream. I haven't talked about him since it's, that's like Mio and Britney who like I'm it's over because they all through Christmas and New Year's, I was the face on their screen while they played all my old episodes and just tore apart everything I've ever said. And it's bullshit. That's um, so, those bullies. Well, uh, it's just annoying you know, mean girl shit. Yeah. But, uh, but like, whatever. But uh, so I'm, tr- so I have a vendetta with Mio straight up. So wow. I'm trying to rally Tenryo and the other guys. And they said, ah, oh, this is gay. We don't want to. I said, all right, well, then you're gay. Fuck you. How we can, how can we make so it now better? We're all how can we make it better? What can we do to make it better? Um, I think I'm doing it. I think I'm just working on that. It's going to take some and time. And so it's just Hatfields and McCoys. Endless. Sometimes. Mio versus Big Tech. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to ask you to do something. What do you I mean, you got an e-girl. Nick, you got an e-girl on the platform. So I'm just dealing with it. I got a gay scandal I'm dealing with, and I got an e-girl I'm dealing with. I mean, she's hot. So, I mean, if you say so, she keeps herself. Weren't you sipping for her a little bit, or was that fake? No, it's kind of the other way around. She was begging me to stay friends with her. Just, just was that screenshot fake though? The Discord thing. The screenshot where I said, "Well, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. But if not, I'll see you later." And I gave her a meme of me dropping her off of a building. So it sounds yeah, like that was real. real. That's real. <laughs> That's when I said goodbye. Come on, big tech. <laughs> Come on. What? This is like this is like high school stuff. <laughs> what do you want? It's like high school reunions. <laughs> You've got an e girl on the platform. Coolers. Oh, what do you on. want? Can you control yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? No, no, actually, no. I see. Here's the thing. I unironically hate women. And gays. I would never sleep in a hotel room with a gay man. Oh, and I don't actually what? put up with Whoa. shit from fucking Britney. Oh, well, Britney's paid me off. I'm I know. Off. Now, now you're getting some ends justified to me. She, she greases pays the you wheels. Off, <laughs> and, and Milo's helping you out with stuff. And you're making compromises. And I'm over here going, what the fuck? So there it is. There it is. Now yeah. we're in somewhere. Right. And well, I, who's going to deal with it? Me! I didn't invite any gays to hang out with me. I didn't invite an e-girl to be my co-streaming. <laughs> I want to hang out with the boys, fuck. and I want all the boys to be straight. I want Brittany to keep paying me. She's got to keep giving me that bread. I'm like, what you got for me today, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> so her and Mio come in. I'm like, all right, what you got for me today? You know, And they start stacking hundreds, stacking hundreds. I'm like, all right, you know? So, yeah, I, I put it in my pocket. I put it in my pocket. I go to Home Depot. I buy a hot dog. Yeah, see? I understand that. So I'm not going to call it, Nick, you got to get rid of it. No, you get your money, King. That's cool. I'm, <laughs> so so I'm stuck down here in the trenches. That means I'm going to – I'm throwing elbows, and I'm starting feuds, and I'm working angles, and I'm pissing everybody off because this is just I'm, – I'm out here in these streets with these hoes, man. And so – that's just what it is, dude. Like, I don't care. I'll, I'm having fun. Everybody else is mad. I feel like I'm winning. They're losing. They're big mad. I'm big happy. I'm making money tonight. They're screaming and screeching, and they're felted, and I win. That's how I feel. Until you come in and say stop, and you, you're upset about it, and I'm like, damn. But- I mean, you, if you want to go at them, I don't really care. If you and Bo are fighting... For whatever reason, that's fine. Just leave me out of it. Why you got to drag me into this? I was talking about care. Beardson tonight. The title is Beardson New, which is like I'm just messing with it because he was drunk on Weekly Sweat, drunk as a skunk, went and fell on his face afterward because he was so that's drunk. Funny. That's funny. I know. Funny. But I wasn't making fun of him for being drunk. I'm, be- I'm bringing it out like I'm. I knew that it would make him really mad to do this. It was scandalous. But he's out here talking hot shit about me, so. You know, it can go both ways. It doesn't have to, like, I don't want to just be endlessly just eating shit that flows downhill. And it's fine. If they want to shit on me, I'll throw it right back. 
That's what that's what happens. But but he's out here talking shit. Like fine, that's how I see it. I don't see the problem. I don't think I got to get punked by these guys forever. And we're right back where we started before. But you ended it up last time. You said uh, you know this time. Uh, you know, I'm going to give you some protection, but next time I'm going to wash my hands like Pontius Pilate. Literally the words you said. <laughs> and I'm basically, you're going to feed me to these Pharisees. And I'm surrounded by freaking Pharisees that are doxing me online right now. And they're sitting around gossiping about how they conspire to take down big tech. It's literally like that. And these people that are around here on Cozy, I know they got your back and you love them because they're your friends. But they got issues. If you were my strongest supporter, I would come and help you out. But you... You criticize me. You're making me want to go in on the side of the hate. When Ethan Ralph, well, I think that's when, the when, signal that I am your strongest supporter because I'm willing to tell you the truth. Ah, uh, no, no, no. I've heard that many times before. It's not a good thing to say. But when Ethan Ralph texts me and says, "You know, it's him or me," I'm like, Whoa. "Yes, sir." I'm like, "Yes, sir." <laughs> Ethan Ralph. <laughs> I'm like, you know, Damn. I'll take care of him, Mister Ralph. I'll take care of him. Yeah. Uh, because you want to know why? Because whenever I'm, because I know Ethan Ralph may be addicted to Xanax. He may be fat. He may have blue hair, but I know that if Ethan Ralph is drunk as a skunk and high at the bar and somebody starts picking on me, he is going to throw his full body weight at that person like a True. human cannonball and kill them. And you, you might be like, I don't know. Should I get into this fight? Let me evaluate the facts first. Let me get to the bottom of Wait a second. So, you know, that's loyalty. No, I think I think I understand that you would have that thought about me, especially based on like what's going on right now. But anybody who knows me well, like behind the scenes, off the camera, and and the people who watch my show on the regular, um they know that I have that for you and for Ralph. And I have taken hits for Ralph and for you a lot. And every single time it comes up, in fact, like, that's just how it goes. So, I mean, Ralph has the gun to throw around bigger than mine. True. But, uh, and, and, uh, and my style is more of a rope-a-dope style more than just, like, run and gun. If you haven't noticed, I listen a lot. I think. I wait. I might take a few hits before I push back. I give the enemy a little bit of room to come in before I surround. Like my style is a little bit more of that. Uh, his is just fire all the guns now. Go everybody fire every single gun immediately. And that's not my I style. So uh, it's cool. There is a fun fact. Well, it. here I'm just old school. Me, I feel like if I'm friends with somebody, if I'm your nigga, I'm your nigga. And like, if somebody, if like my closest friend killed somebody and they came to my house with blood all over their shirt and said, I just killed somebody, you got to help me bury the body. I would go and help them. I would go and help them bury the body. Yep. And if the cops came around, I would say, I don't know anything. What the fuck are you talking about? Get out of my house. And, Based. you know, and I would say to the, I would say to the person, I say, Hey, what's going on? Like, why'd you, or I may, and if he said, I don't ask, I'd say, okay, you know, um, and I'm just old school. Like when it comes to loyalty like that, like my parents are like city people or neighborhood people. It's like a very, it's like a street ethic. And that's just how I roll when it comes to stuff in politics. And I just hate, I absolutely hate when you think somebody's your friend and shit, like you're being attacked, shit happens to you. And they go, well, hang on a second. Well, hang on a second. You, well, listen here, Buster. It's like, hey, I'm not here for fucking that. Like, are we yeah. are we friends or are we not friends? Now, yeah. if somebody pulls me aside for an intervention and says, listen, Nick, like, you, you got a problem here or something. It's like, okay, well, that's a different story. But it's sort of like you, you throw down with your nigga first, and then you ascertain what happens later. Yep. That's how, kind of how I roll. Well, I haven't pulled back from you. I haven't, like, oh, I'm going to go... I'm going to take a month off and see how the dust settles. Then maybe I'll stream on Cozy some more because there's a gay scandal. There's nothing like that. But I'm also not just, I mean, some of the other people are just not talking about it at all. Or they're being very ginger and being like. Uh, yeah, which they should be. That's like yep. supporting me. Okay. You're you're well, like all the other people. You kind of just like, you're, you know, you're not being a bro on this one. And, uh, you know. I hate that you see it that way. 
I but mean, that's I how think, it is. Well, I, I expect I that kind of loyalty. You're not, it's not ride or die. I would rather uh, have you hit the touchdown and I die and I don't get to celebrate with you rather than you get to the 90-yard line and fail. And I was with right by your side saying yes, sir, the whole way. I don't want to say yes, sir, and then fail. I'd rather die and you win and I don't get to celebrate. So I'm throwing – that's how I see it is I'm actually throwing myself in a landmine here. That's how I see it. If you don't agree, you'd agree. But my, my dumb ass sees it that way. I'm 40 years old. I'm a millennial. My perspective is one way. But I think this conversation needed to be had, and I'm trying to have a conversation that needs to be had. I'm trying to sign, shine some light and push some pressure on these other streamers that are on here doing their own thing, cozy, no pushback. I'm pushing back because I think it'll be better in the long run, and we have a better chance of success in the long run if I do what I'm doing right now versus if I don't do it and everybody's happy and copacetic. So okay. I, that's how I feel like I'm being a bro. Well. I've noted. I noted. I I have uh, noted your pushback, and we'll see. But and uh, I wasn't in, in planning for you to come onto the stream tonight. I thought it was. I thought I'd piss off Beards and Beardley, and then Ralph would go off on me tomorrow. He's going to dox me and read my whole Kiwi Farms and try to. He said he's going. <laughs> I thought I was just instigating that, and it was going to be wild, but it was going to be a massive burn up of this thing that's like smoldering. I thought, like, like give it some oxygen. Let's burn it up. Let's go. But here we are. This is a different outcome than I... Give us, give us some drama against the others. Can you find somebody, as a bro, can you find somebody and create drama for somebody that's a problem for me rather than a friend of mine? As a bro? I don't, I can, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have that. I don't know if that, that's not... I'm a lover, man. <laughs> okay, that sounds stupid, but like, there what, it is. I, I really am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't go <laughs> trying to lecture everybody else's kids. But like, who? Who? That's who gives crazy. a shit what I say? I'm not an oh, attack dog. Come on now. For real. Like, I don't know. Well, I don't want to say yes. Were... Okay, yes. I'll go after John Doyle. I mean, I did a John. I have a. I have a clip channel that has a go off on John Doyle that's got like two thousand views. But like, nobody cares. Even when you were going against Max Carson, that was, I mean, Destiny made a big stink about it, but like that was good, you know? Yeah, but that was also an accident. You know that, right? You know I didn't rally anybody to go report him. You know that wasn't my idea. It was literally somebody came in my chat and said, hey, Big Tech, I reported one of uh, Mr. Girl's videos last night, and it's gone now. And I'm like, no way. And I pulled it up. I said, hey, well, golly, dadgum, it so is you're, gone. You're like said, refusing... You're refusing to attack my enemies and insisting on attacking me and everyone I'm friends with. Is that, right. is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the support. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go. <laughs> I know it's retarded. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. All right, see you uh, later. I love you. Uh, I, I wish you nothing but the best, and I'm on your side till the end. So. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. All thanks, right. Nick. Okay.